You're damn right. I'm sorry, ma'am. What the f Oh, Edgar Wright, one of my best favorite directors in the world. And how did he do on Baby Driver? Let's get into it. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Bam! This movie right here, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, was written and directed by Edgar Wright. And seriously, seriously, to this day, this is still one of the best comic book movies of all time. Easily in my top 10, this movie is freaking fantastic. The only thing that makes me not give this movie a perfect 10 is because I hate opening credits that don't serve a purpose. And what's crazy is Edgar Wright decided to do Baby Driver when things unfortunately did not work out with Marvel Studios a few years a few years ago. He was supposed to direct that movie Ant-Man. He was actually supposed to direct that movie before Iron Man came out in 2008. But things just kept getting pushed off. And, you know, as the Marvel Cinematic Universe just came into development and more and more people found it popular around the world, you know, this this uh, penny pinching, money saving executive dictator over at Marvel decided like, no, I don't think what you have will fit within our MCU anymore. So Edgar Wright decided to chunk the deuce and like, hey, I'm out. I know what I'm doing. Y'all don't have faith in me. I'm going to go over here and make Baby Driver and leave y'all to, you know, Ant-Man. Ant-Man turned out being pretty good. And unfortunately, um, the, that penny pinching executive that I was talking about is uh, his name was Ike Perlmutter. He was the guy that was standing over Kevin, not Kevin, let's say Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey is in this movie I'm about to talk about. Kevin Feige. Um, but, you know, Kevin Feige was about to quit too. I'm like, hey, you know, I can't do, I can't report to this Pearl Metal guy no more. He, he, he is messing up the creative juices in this MCU. I'm out. And Bob Iger or Alan Horn, whichever one of those are higher than the other one over at Disney, was like, okay, you can just come over to us. And they found somebody for Ant-Man. And unfortunately, it was not Edgar Wright that um, did Ant-Man. Edgar Wright decided to do Baby Driver. And I'm very glad he did because this movie is something that I've never seen before. Now, other films that Edgar Wright has directed, like I just said, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World was one. He's also in charge of the Cornetto, the Cornetto trilogy with the Shaun of the Dead, uh, Hot Fuzz, and Wor A World's End. And I do, do love all of those movies. They're very funny. Those particular movies are not for everyone. They're for people like me and my particular taste. You know, but if you're curious, you know, look them up somewhere and I think you would have a great time. But what I do like about Edgar Wright and his directing style is he really is an auteur in form. I mean, when he has his stamp on a movie, you really can't tell because he just tells his stories in ways that no other writer or director can. And that just goes with just the the way what he does with a lot of behind the scenes that a normal director wouldn't, you know, even look at. Every director has a score or a soundtrack in his movie, but Edgar Wright is actually a person that can actually make the music in his movie a character and be the most prominent character over top the live action people, whether that's Angor. Uh, Jamie Foxx or John Hamm or John Bernthal, anybody. I mean, the music in this film speaks volumes in more ways than one. And that's also what makes the main character, Baby, you know, so fascinating. And I, I even just like that. His name is Baby. I mean, you know, anywhere you go, if you tell someone your name is Baby, they're going to kind of give you that double tick, like what, Baby? B-A-B-Y? And he just runs with it like, yeah, B-A-B-Y. And like, he's just so smooth with it. And what I love about his character is... He's so confident, but he's not cocky. I, what I like about him is he just has his own like set of rules that he abides by. It can't be shaking no matter what comes into his path. I mean, and yeah, he's in all the Divergent movies, the Divergent, Insurgent, and whatever else kind of detergents there are. And those films are not bad, but they're not good either. He was also in Paper Towns, and I never really, you know, paid attention to him before, but when I was watching this movie, I was like, there's just something about him that just seems so familiar to me. And when you're talking to him, he's just a genuine guy that just, you know, just happens to be in this predicament, and he just wants to get out of it. And that's the gist of this film, is 
He has to work for this crime boss for reasons where you have to find out, where you have to, you know, see the movie for yourself. But there's just something about him. I mean, he had an accident when he was younger while he had headphones in his ears and that created some humming. So he really can't go throughout his day to day unless he has some type of headphones in his ear. And I like how the movie took that device and actually used it for the soundtrack of the movie. And I just like how he put, I, mean, I could just tell he was having fun in the editing room and the mixing board, you know, mixing all the sounds because it just really does bring the scene to life, you know, in ways that you can't even imagine, the ways that you've never even seen before. And when Baby is driving this car, he is driving the shit out of this car like a true professional. I mean, like, oh my gosh, it's just crazy how skillful he is in this car. He, I mean, he is just so calculated and focused on every square inch of the car and making sure that it does exactly the, what it's supposed to be. And what the film really is about is just baby. He is a driver for these jobs with holding up people, robbing people, just trying to rob a bank, rob this place, you know, just doing, you know, bad jobs with dirty money, working for a crime boss. And he really doesn't want to do it. He has to do it. And he's just trying to get out of the situation that he's in. And he's just like almost there. But, you know, you have Kevin Spacey coming in talking about, no, you know, one more job. That means we're straight. That does not mean we're done. And for Kevin Spacey to be the bad guy in this movie, and there are multiple bad guys, he really is a good one without even being that threatening. I mean, he, he he's not real strong and muscular. He's not, you know, he doesn't have an entourage of big, you know, swole guys that are, you know, break your legs. He doesn't carry around knobs, guns, or whatever. He's just a regular guy in a suit. But it's just something about his character to where you're like, okay, you don't, you, it's just something about him to where when he says something one time, you know to believe him. You know that he's just not messing around. He never raises his voice. He's just something that's really, really, really scary about his cool and calm nature about the way he gives instructions to where like, man, you know, if I cross this guy, not only will he hurt me, he will hurt me, everybody that I care about and all the people that th they'll, those people care about. And will also make sure that your grandchildren feel it too and that's just kind of scary but then again you have jamie fox over here who is an asshole bad guy but then again you have john bernthal over here who's a different type of bad guy and then you have john ham over here with his girlfriend that is a, a, a completely different type of bad guy you don't know who is better than the other person and you're like man you know i hope they all get along because if the crap hits the fan there's gonna be a lot of blood everywhere and a bunch of bad guys dead and you know nobody's gonna know what's going on but you know that confusion on screen just kind of makes you just that more much more exciting and when you think the film comes up to a, a halt it doesn't i mean it just turns around as a 180 like he, baby does in this car all the time and the plot just gets thicker and thicker and thicker so like, wow i thought i knew how this was going to play out but nope i was wrong or where are they going to go with this one right here and the whole film from beginning to end is just so unconventional like seriously this is not a normal 3x story this movie has a great ending but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a happy ending too it's a it's an ending that i sat there and watched and i was like okay wow you know i can accept this you know th this is somewhat realistic and going back to baby's character who i love i mean he's just so peculiar in everything that he does i mean he just does these little minute things that just would not matter to anybody else but means the world to him i mean i really do respect the the chores and the hobbies that he puts himself through just to get him through his day what puts a smile on his face to where it may seem like the stupidest thing to you the most petty thing in the world i mean it gets him off and it gets him through his day and i like that and what just makes his character that much diff more different than anything i've ever seen before and just makes him stand out and to where I want to see this movie again. And no, I normally don't even see movies twice in the theater. But it was just something about his character that really intrigued me. To where I just want to know more and more about him. You know, I like I wouldn't mind just like really sitting down and, you know, having a sandwich with this guy. You know, just to see, you know, what events led him to where he is today in his life. And this movie is being marketed as an action crime musical. It does have the action it does have the crime element and it does have a number of a number of great 
musical numbers that I'm sure everyone will appreciate. Now, the ending did get a little, you know, hunky-dory crazy to me. You know, when the good guy is facing the bad guy, I don't like a ton of monologuing. If you have an opportunity to take out your foe, do it right there. Don't talk crap for five minutes like, oh, you finally beat me, but you thought you beat me and I'm right here. And you made me lose somebody, but now you have to lose somebody yourself. I mean, that whole time you could have shot the guy or, you know, shot this other person or whatever. But you just sit there monologuing and it just kind of gets, you know, like Looney Tunes cartoony or whatever. And I'm just really not a fan of that. I really did like this movie. I do like this movie better than The World's End. But it doesn't come anywhere close to Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, uh, Hot Fuzz, or Shaun of the Dead. If I had to rate Baby Driver out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. And this movie ends and like there's just some stuff towards the end where I'm like, oh, snap. I did not think they were bold enough to go there. And to be honest with you, with Edgar Wright in this film this way, I can somewhat understand why Marvel was a little hesitant to have him on as a director. But at the same time, we do need to mix up things and Edgar Wright is the perfect person to do that so i gave it an 8.5 out of 10 but guys that's just my opinion have you seen baby driver yet do you want to see it have i turned you on have i turned you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing and guys i really need your help i cannot wait for black panther to come out next year february 16th of 2018 I would do anything, nearly anything, to go to the red carpet premiere. I, I want to go so bad. I love comic books. I love Marvel. I love Black Panther. I'm a black guy, if you haven't noticed, and that film is being released in Black History Month, so that would just be like the biggest epic dream come true for me. Is it a long shot? You, you know, yeah. You know, will I, will I actually make it there? You know, who knows, but I'm going for it. So help me out by sharing this video 1,000 times. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's perfectly fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get all the content that I have to provide and help me reach my first milestone of hitting 1,000 subscribers. You can also go to my web website, Bookmark it. Check me out there. I have a ton of written reviews. And you can also look me up on social media. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for Baby Driver. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.